Hi there, this is a really quick video to go through some of the questions you guys have been asking about uh, working from home with Inventor and Vault and what can be done to speed it up, uh, how do we license it, how do we even talk to each other effectively. So hopefully I can answer some of these for you. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at four key areas that uh, people have been asking about. Um, so the first one is going to be license files. Um, this seems to be a, a common question at the moment. Second one is speed and performance that uh, we're getting out of the software. Um, third is collaboration. And finally, support. How is that working? So let's uh, start with uh, licensing. Um, because we do have a challenge. We need to be able to get access to a server, uh, to our software, especially at the moment. Uh, many of you will be in the same situation as me. I am um, having to self-isolate because my wife and kids are ill. Um, they don't have corona, but they've got the symptoms. So we, we've still been advised to self-isolate for two weeks. Uh, the kids' schools have closed uh, and we're all being advised to work at home anyway. Um, what this has meant is that uh, many of us have got a lot more distractions. Uh, many of us are having to be a bit more flexible in terms of when we work and how we work. Um, you know, a lot more evening work, which can mean things like maybe you need to move your vault back up to later at night or till after midnight um, if you've got enough time for it to run before the morning so it doesn't disrupt people working. Lots of little things like this. So. Uh, in terms of licensing then, what have we got? We've got two types of licenses, standalone and network. If you currently use a standalone license, you can obviously carry on using that at home by taking your PC home, whether it's a laptop or a desktop. Um, as long as it has internet access regularly, it will carry on working. If you want to, you can install the CAD software on your own home PC. You're entitled to a home use license. Um, as part of your subscription and uh, that is activated in the same way. Install the software, log in with your credentials and it should start working. Okay, so for standalone users it's fairly straightforward. For network users, uh, slightly more complicated but we have three options for you. So first of all work through a VPN and the software will work as it does when you're in the office. Secondly, you can borrow a license for up to six months uh, and then return it when you're finished. That will remove the license from the license pool so other people can't share it. But um, at the moment, key users might need to have a, a set license. Thirdly, if you are using a multi-user license, you are entitled to create a home use license for each of those. So software coordinators, you can go in um, to your manage.autodesk.com uh, account page or your accounts.autodesk.com page, uh, either of those, uh, and you can actually generate a, um, a home use license for C uh, set users. Okay. Um, there are a whole load of other uh, question marks around that, that people have. Um, if you do have questions there, just get in touch. What we're going to do is we've already shared on social media uh, through LinkedIn uh, information about how to license and best practice for working at home. I'll, I'll try to put links to those in the uh, comments of, of this video as well. Um, but do keep track and try to see um, what the latest is there. Um, for most of us, we're going to be working on a VPN. Um, a lot of companies, uh, it's either going to be VPN or via remote desktop that they're going to connect. Um, if they are working through VPN, then you may have a limit to the number of connections that you can get through. Uh, we're seeing a lot of companies struggle with VPN access at the moment. If you're working on remote desktop, it's more the amount of bandwidth it can take uh, if a lot of people are doing that, as well as the, the graphics and the like that you can get. Uh, what we are suggesting to companies is work through a VPN, connect in, grab what you need out of Vault onto your local PC, disconnect. Do your work locally, reconnect in again, return that um, data to the server, and then disconnect again. You shouldn't be, need to be connected to the work uh, network all the time. 
because uh, things like email are generally now on Office 365. So there is no need to go through the business for that. In order to help the amount of data flooding around and to reduce the requirements Inventa has on network locations, I'd also suggest you make your templates and design data local. Um, so take it off any network drives you have, put it in a set place on each of the user's PCs and update your project file to point to those local uh, folders. So that's templates, design data and material libraries as well. Uh, same with any iLogic rules. If you've got iLogic rules and people are working remotely, they may not have access to those without being on VPN. So keep that in mind. Um, by having this data local, Inventor shouldn't be looking up onto the network and, and therefore it should work quite a bit quicker. In terms of Vault, we can turn on some compression uh, that isn't on by default between the client and the server. It involves changing some XML files. Uh, and again, I've posted information about this on social media recently, and I'll put a link uh, in the comments. Um, compression uh, does work for some users, not for others. Um, we are having different reports from clients, so do test it. Not had any negatives of doing it yet, uh, except if you're in the office. If you are still office-based, it will slow you down. If you're home-based, it may keep it the same or it may speed you up. So it's worth trying anyway. Um, in terms of collaboration, uh, Inventor and Vault both have something called shared views. This allows you to select a file and push it to the web where you can send a link out to other users. You can then rotate that file around, uh, take screenshots, comment back, so you can have a bit of design review going on. They can do some basic measurements, they can explode at high components, um, view properties, view builds and materials, a bit like you can do in design review. Uh, but uh, the shared views is all web-based. There is no access to download, so your data is secure and anything uploaded is only kept for 30 days. So it is temporary as well. That is being used by an awful lot of companies. Uh, certainly in the last week, a lot of companies have started using it to work between team members where they're used to working in the same office together. Um, because that is actually one of the hardest factors with this, uh, but also working with their clients as well, where they don't have, um, they're not able to get to site to do these design reviews. Now, if you're interested in more and how you could work with your clients or in doing design reviews virtually, um, I would recommend getting in contact with Nick John, uh, who is our visualization specialist. Who can look through, uh, who can talk to you about some of the visualization um, tools that we have access to and how they can help you um, work collaboratively as well. There is no need to be in the same office as someone to do a design review these days. Okay, so moving on, uh, the other thing that we would recommend, and I'm a really strong advocate for this, is do some regular CAD meetings once a week, especially now we're all working remotely. A lot of users may be not used to working remotely. They may not feel comfortable calling someone or asking questions or interrupting uh, someone like they could in the office when they can see you're not uh, busy at a set point. Um, so by having these regular sessions, people can talk about the issues they're having, can talk about the methodologies they're adopting, and you can make sure that everyone is working in the same manner, the same way, uh, at the same time, so that uh, it's much easier when we go back to the office in the future. It also means any issues can be nipped in the bud there and then, and you can use our service desk to help resolve any of those. Daft as it sounds, a lot of companies haven't thought about this yet, is equipment. Many users are going to be working at home and may not be used to it. I'm quite lucky I've got an area in my house that I can work, but not everyone is so fortunate. You may be working on the dining room table, you may be working um, on your sofa. You may have kids running around, you might be working in the utility for all I know with the tumble dryer going in the background. Um, whatever the location, you need that to be as productive an environment as possible. So even if you're not allowed to bring your PC home from work, 
maybe something that should be asked is can you take some of the additional equipment home such as a lamp such as your monitors um, your 3d connection space mouse uh, your cat mouse all these little things that can make a difference and, and make it feel more of a work environment and make a user much more productive um, the other thing i'd recommend and again this is quite a daft one offer users to take the chair home if they want it. A lot of people, if they're working in a dining room, for instance, they may only have a wooden chair to work on, or they may only have a sofa to sit on. So by offering them some actual furniture as well, they can have somewhere to work. And that can be temporary and taken back to work when they're all allowed back, but uh, for the meantime, make it as productive a location as we can. Okay. In terms of how we are supporting you, our service desk is fully open. Uh, our staff are working from home, so um, you may find that the calls come through a mobile number rather than the office number. If you need to call us, contact us in the usual way, log the calls online, call the support number uh, or email in and the uh, ticket will be logged and we'll get back to you. Um, so there should be no interruption on that. What I would say is some of the staff do have kids and what we might find is that as they're working at home they and they're trying to balance childcare, you may have a bit of background noise where kids are screaming and shouting in the background. Please bear with us, please be patient. We're all in the same boat here and we're trying to make the best of it that we can. Okay. In terms of what we can do for your business though, on top of the service desk, a few companies have asked about this already. We want to, uh, a lot of companies um, have projects that have been postponed or cancelled uh, and so they're looking at what they can offer their staff in the meantime. Can they do some remote um, training, in which case if that's what you want, contact our account managers and they can help out. The other thing is can they start standardising the working processes and the models um, so that when we're all back in the office they, you can hit the floor running. Um, with that, we have a full team of people that can do uh, iLogic. Uh, we can do remote mentoring uh, as well as some training, uh, and we can aid by looking at uh, any code as well. So do get in touch on that uh, should you need to. As I say, I'm going to put some links in um, the comments uh, for this video. I'm going to also try and do a, a video for the shared views so that you've got that um, for those of you that haven't come across it before. Please do keep in touch. Please do reach out if you've got problems. And um, I'm looking forward to actually getting back out and meeting people and speaking to people um, once we're all uh, allowed back into the offices. Okay, thanks.